You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hey, Perry. Yeah, over here. Find anything? I'm not sure. All right, we better get back to the car. I can't see where I'm going. Whoa, careful. Jeez. Why did we get sent out here on a night like this? First snowfall of the season? Watch your step or you'll end up with mud all over that nice, clean uniform. I could sure go for some coffee right now. Well, there's a diner over on the road by the edge of the woods. Is it still open? Let's find out as soon as we call in. So, uh, what did you see out there? Hard to say. Tops of some trees have been knocked off. Sure looks like something hit the pond, all right. Something like what? Huh? Maybe a plane. Yeah, no flights in the area. I checked. No, well, could have been a private aircraft. Possible, I guess. Easy to get off course in this weather. Well, we're not going to find it with the water freezing. Over. Whatever it is, it's going to stay under that ice till next spring. You think it could have been a meteor? Hmm? Maybe. Well, we better call in a report. Tell them there's nothing here. Lady who saw it wants to alert the National Guard. <laughs> That's all we need. This is 1183A. 1183A reporting in. Headquarters, go ahead. We're checking out a report on a UFO supposed to have gone down in the area of Hook's Landing. A what? Unidentified flying object. You serious? <laughs> Don't kill the messenger. Just doing our job. Okay, did you find it? Well, it appears something did clip off some trees and came down, but whatever it was, she's under the ice in Tracy's pond now, and we can't see a thing. Hold on a minute. You see anything else? Nothing but a sea of snow. But there's something. Now, this is Paget again. We can't get a look around till morning. We're going to head back in, and then, uh... We're... Hey, Bill! Yeah? Looks like some footprints over here. What kind? It's hard to say. Maybe an animal? Maybe? Uh, they lead up out of the pond. What's going on out there? Uh, there appears to be some evidence that, uh... Say again? Those have got to be fresh prints with all the new snow. So if something did crash land, I'd say at least one person got out alive. They made it up to the woods and over to the highway. Right. Just swam up out of the ice and then started walking. What are you talking about? We'll have to call you back. Come on, is this a gag? You guys are at the donut shop, right? Uh, we, uh, may have a situation up here. What kind? I don't know yet. We'll report back in a little bit. All right, Paget. Listen, there's talk about a bridge going out. Enough ice jammed against it to cool the Congo. So as soon as you can, better make sure it's posted and blocked off. Otherwise, you'll really have a situation. Got it. Roger and out. My flashlight's going out. Yeah, it's the cold. Mine's still good. Uh, let's have a look at those prints. See? They came out over here. What did? Well, whatever survived. Something left that pond. Came out here and went that way across the highway. Toward the diner. Hmm. Makes sense. Cup of hot coffee to take the chill off. Looks like a bus parked in front. Don't suppose it came out of the pond too, do you? <sighs> These aren't wheel tracks. They're footprints. All right then. Let's follow them and make sure that's where they lead. Say they do. Then what? Then I guess we go inside and check everybody's green card. And if we don't find any little aliens with three eyes, we call it a night. Is that okay with you? Let's do it. Wintry February night. Order of events. Two state troopers take a report from a frightened woman and note the arrival of an unidentified flying object. Then the checkout you've just heard, as the troopers verify the event but find nothing more enlightening to add. Beyond evidence of some strange lights and tracks leading across the highway to a diner. You've heard of trying to find a needle in a haystack? Well, stay with us and you'll be part of an investigating team whose mission is not to find that proverbial needle. No, their task is even harder. They've got to find a Martian in a roadside diner. And you'll search with them because you've just landed in the middle of the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? Starring Richard Kind, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Uh, 
Hello, officers. Evening. Come on in. Coffee? You read our minds. Two coffees coming up. You guys sheriffs? State troopers. Any trouble out there tonight? Whose bus is that in front? Mine, officer. What's the problem? Bridge up ahead. It's been declared impassable. Oh, no kidding. The county engineer just put out a warning. Ice flow stacked up against it. Another pound of weight, it'll be driftwood. That's gonna be tough. Really tough. All right, so it looks like you're gonna have to turn around and go back. Spend the night at the last town. No can do, boys. There was a slide up at the turnoff as soon as we went through. Blocked the whole road. Looks like you're kind of marooned. Oh, no. I can't believe this. What are we gonna do? We can't just wait here. Till morning, anyway. Till morning? No, no, that's quite impossible. No, I've got to be in Boston at 9 a.m. Then you better start walking, mister. That bus is gonna stay parked out there till they fix the bridge. <laughs> Either that, or hope they drop you some snowshoes. I tell you, it's out of the question. I absolutely must be in Boston. I'll pay extra. Name your price, bus driver. No way. I'm not risking my life or the lives of any of these folks, not to mention that bus out there, property of the Cayuga Bus Company. Then I'll hire a cab. Where's the telephone? Right there on the wall. But don't waste your dime. Nobody will drive out here on a night like this, with the snow and all. This is outrageous. Do you know how much money is at risk? Take it easy, mister. That goes for everybody. Better make yourselves comfortable and uh, get some hot food in you. No problem. I can cook up any kind of grub you want. Cheeseburgers, bowl of chili, clam chowder. I even got some nice T-bones in the cold case. Anybody for steak and fries? You the owner? That's me. Haley's Diner. And I'm Haley. At least I was last time I looked. There a motel around here? Not for the next 35 miles. How about a boarding house? Anything? Nope. This is it. What are we going to do, George? Will the bridge be open by the morning? I can't guarantee it. I'm afraid you'll just have to take your chances. Oh, that's just great. That's really swell. You get comfortable, eat some grub. That's precious little consolation for my meeting in Boston. Calm down. We're all in this together. Why don't you just have a seat like everyone else? Oh, this is quite a bus line you work for. They don't care much about keeping a schedule, do they? I wouldn't be too hard on them, mister. They don't control the snowfall and the bridges and the avalanches and the sides of hills that decide to come down. That's pretty much out of their hands. They try, but sometimes Mother Nature, she just doesn't listen. Need I remind you they nonetheless have a responsibility to their passengers? A legally binding contract. What do you think? They're all off the bus, aren't they? <laughs> Are they? Well, I don't see any little green men, do you? Ready for a refill? Uh, not just yet. Let me ask you a question. Shoot. All these people from the bus? Well, now I guess they are. Where else would they be from? Well, that's what we were wondering. What's the trouble? We didn't say there was any trouble. Maybe not, but you fellas got that look in your eyes. What kind of look is that? Kind of on guard. Checking everybody out. I can see it in your face. So, you're tracking somebody, huh? An escaped fugitive? Nothing like that. Anything I can do to help? We'll let you know. This criminal. What'd he do anyway? Oh, nothing yet. To tell you the truth, we're not sure who we're looking for, or even if he's here. So it is a he? Come on, Perry, finish your coffee. And we better get a move on. How many people got off the bus? Take a look. The gang's all here. You saw them come in? Sure did. You there, driver. Yeah, officer? You have a passenger manifest? A passenger manifest? Well, what do you think I got parked out there, a 707? Just answer the question. Mister, that's a 14-year-old bus, and business is lousy. Personally, I think my boss would run rum across the border if there was enough money in it. Me, I wouldn't do that, of course, because it's against the law. Besides, I'd get caught. Uh, but for now, we don't ask the passengers any questions. We take their fares, kiss them on the cheek, and help them on and off. We're glad to have them with or without names. You know how many you had, though? Yes, sir, that I do know. How many? Six, unless one of them fell out a window when we hit a bump. I picked up six, and I'm supposed to deliver six. That's what they pay me for. And you don't have any kind of list. In that case, we might have a little bit of a problem. What's that? I count seven, besides Haley and the driver. Me too. So if nobody fell out, somebody must have jumped in. Wait a minute. The young couple in the booth, 
Those two retired folks, the lady at the table with the fake fur coat. This isn't fake, honey. It costs plenty. Sorry, miss. Uh, then there's Mr. Boston Big Shot and the old guy at the counter. Seven. You're right. It's funny. I know I only had six. Anybody in here before the bus stopped? Nope. I haven't served anybody since 11 this morning. What a day, huh? Then the bus pulls up and these folks get off. You saw that? Yep. I saw them walk in, all together. <laughs> Where else would they come from? Say, is this a trick question? They did. This place was empty when we came in. Then how do you account for seven people? Well, it sure beats me. So that means one of them didn't get off. Which one of you people wasn't on the bus? I was. We both were. What's he talking about? We all were. What kind of interrogation is this? It's not an interrogation. Then what would you call it? A police grilling? A lineup? Or are you fishing for something else? Some unspecified crimes? We're simply gathering information. Well, if we're going to be questioned, I insist on the right to consult with a lawyer. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Ain't that a good one now? First he wants snowshoes, then a lawyer. I didn't see you on the bus. <laughs> no, that's really funny, because I didn't see you either. So I guess that makes one of us a liar, don't it? All right, everybody, hold it down. Nobody's in trouble here. We just need your cooperation. This is preposterous. What difference does it make who was on the bus, who wasn't? And whether there were six or, or, or seven or, or 120? Easy, mister. And you, proprietor, you're supposed to be serving us. So are we going to get some food or aren't we? Is this a diner or a Gestapo headquarters? What's it all about, fellas? Go ahead, tell them. You hear something fly over here tonight? Fly? You mean a plane? Anything. Hmm. Nope. I don't think so. Why? Well, there was a call into Central about two hours ago. Woman said she heard something fly over, and then she looked out of her window and saw it go down. Down? From where? From up there. Up there? Unidentified flying object. What? Well, now that's something new. Unidentified flying object, huh? Nothing come down from up there except snow, snow, and more snow. That's all I've seen for the past 14 hours. Where'd she say it came down? Close to here. <laughs> a UFO? Oh, that's a good one. Something did land in Tracy's pond. How do you know that? It left a lot of broken branches before it hit. And... And what? We found tracks leading away from the water. Or rather, the ice. Tracks leading where? To here. Let me get this straight. You mean somebody landed or crashed or whatever they did in Tracy's pond and then came here right into my diner? Oh, that's crazy. Nothing came in here since this morning. Nothing except... Except me and my busload. My six fares. I only had six. But there's seven in this room. That means one of these people. I don't like this. How do we even know you're state troopers? Easy, honey. They, they got uniforms. See their badges? I don't like this one bit. We're going away to get married, and now... No, this, this thing happened. Sit down, Connie. It, it's going to be all right, I promise. How can you, George? How can you promise... Relax, miss. There's no need for... I'm trying to understand what you're saying, officer, but I'm not sure I... Let the man talk. You're trying to tell us that there's one among us? We don't know which one, mind you, who landed in some kind of flying saucer and then joined us, infiltrated the group, and then slipped into the diner right alongside us? Do I understand you correctly? Came in here with us. But that's not possible. We would have seen him. Not necessarily. Do you remember who you were sitting next to? Why, I wasn't sitting next to anyone. I was all the way in back, trying to take a nap. Well, there you go, then. It's snowing at dark, and we climbed out of the bus with our eyes closed because of the snowfall. Anyone could have come in with us, and we wouldn't have noticed. But you were all together on the bus. Some of you must have noticed who the other passengers were. That doesn't cut much ice. They loaded up in the snow down at Hook's Landing. How long ago was that? How long? Uh, let's see. We left the landing three hours and um, 12 minutes ago. And to tell you the truth, I don't remember who got on. All I know is there was an even half dozen. <laughs> Just like a real science fiction story. That's what she is. Like a regular Ray Bradbury. Six humans and one monster all the way from outer space. Wonder if it came from Mars or from Venus. Oh, why don't you keep quiet? What about you, fella? You wouldn't happen to have an eye in the back of your head, would you? I find you insufferable, sir. Do you know that? And you ain't no prize yourself. Well, what do you do now? Line us up for a strip search? Nobody said anything about a search. Good. Because there's a little matter of civil liberties. 
Without reasonable cause, you have no right to ask anything beyond identification. And more than that, you're skating on thin ice, legally speaking. Very thin ice indeed, sir. Well, go ahead. I'm a dancer. I don't have a whole lot to hide. I usually get paid to take off my clothes. But if that's what you want... Look, lady, this isn't exactly par for our course, either. We go off on an awful lot of nutty assignments, but this one... Then let me make it easy for you. I work a lot of clubs, and I know how to spot people. Go ahead. You pair off the couples. Since it's just one person who doesn't belong here, that eliminates the couples. Sounds logical. Whew. I guess that means we're in the clear. Cross us off, we're two of the humans. And us, too. Yes, George. My wife and I, were exonerated. Connie? Connie, what's the matter? Nothing. Yes, there is. What are you looking at me like that for? I, I could have sworn... Sworn what? That you had a mole on your chin. A mole? Connie, I've never had a mole on my chin. You did too. Honey, I did not. I can tell you what's happening now. We're all going to get so panicky that everybody and his brother will start picking up invisible clues from everybody else. This stuff is nonsense. It certainly is nonsense. If a husband and wife suddenly start to wonder whether the husband really is the husband or the wife is real, really... When did you start turning so gray? Now, wait a minute. I think 23 years is long enough for a woman to figure out who she's married to. So stop looking at me like that. <laughs> oh, this is rich. I love this. Better than a horror movie. He don't know who she is, and she don't know who he is. And as for you, Miss Fur Coat, we don't know who you are. And that big talking lemon sucker over there, he's the most suspicious of the bunch. What's happening? That jukebox. It started up by itself. Who did that? Nobody was anywhere near it. That ever happened before? Not unless uh, you put a quarter in it. The lights! What's wrong with the lights? Somebody turned the lights back on. There's your lights again. Just gotta be patient is all. This happened a lot, does it? Not till now. Must have been the storm. Could have tripped a circuit breaker, I guess. Or a power outage. A line down somewhere. Only... Only what? Why did it last a couple of seconds and then come back on? Unless... What are you thinking? Unless... Someone caused it to happen. Where's your circuit box? In back. You want my flashlight? Everybody stay where you are. Leave your gun in your holster, Perry. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. We'll question each one of you, one at a time. Now, see here. One at a time. Stay seated, everybody. You got a back door to this place? Sure do. How does it lock? Night latch and key, why? Where's the key? Right here on my belt. Go back there and lock it. It's always locked. But if that certain somebody is really from outer space, they'll just go through the wall anyway, won't they? <laughs> Check them for wings. Check them all for wings. Look under their coats. Might as well start with you, Grandpa. You got identification? I left it down there by the pond in my spaceship. Who won the National League pennant last year? What is this anyway? Some practical joke? If so, well, you've prolonged it beyond the point of human endurance. <laughs> yeah, human. Just answer the question. I understand. I get it. So keep your britches on. Pittsburgh Pirates won it, officer. And then they took four out of seven from the Yankees. That's right. Sharp boys, those two. Real sharp. Didn't figure a Martian would know anything about the great American pastime, did you? You got identification, miss? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, I left my wallet. I left my wallet with my suitcase. Hmm. And where's that? On the bus? I didn't give her a baggage check. I would have remembered. That means it was a carry-on. Was it? No. See there? You better strip search her pronto. It was shipped on ahead. What's your name, miss? Ethel McConnell. I'm a professional dancer. With how many legs? <laughs> how many you got under that coat? I'm gonna belt you, Grandpa. She was on the bus. How do you know? Yeah, well, she's the only one I noticed. Thank you. But who noticed him? <laughs> how do we know you're the same fellow who was driving the bus? There ain't nobody who's been exonerated yet, that's for sure. Look, let's cut this farce right now. That's what we're trying to do. Well, then let each one of us show our identification and put an end to it for good and all. This whole thing is getting out of hand. Then how do you explain the extra person in here? Very simply. The driver is mistaken. Seven people got on the bus and he thought there were only six. Is that possible? Not a chance in the world. 
I counted six heads before we took off, like always. There were six passengers. And what's your name? Olmstead. That's O-L-M. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Who's doing that? Never happened before, I swear. Oh, I can't stand this. Connie, please, sit down. I mean it, I can't. Getting upset isn't going to help matters. What if... What if it were invisible? Sit down, please. What if there were something in here from that pond? Oh, Connie... What if there were, but we couldn't see it? I said, sit down. Hey, I'll see to her, officer. Honey, calm down. Why is he taking his gun out? Easy, Perry. I think it's time for a look around. All right, folks, we may have a good laugh about all this in the morning, but for the time being, do the smart thing. Everybody just stay where you are. My partner's going to check the grounds, and please, nobody do anything foolish like trying to leave. I'll be right outside the door. Perry? Here's your flashlight. Back door's locked up tight, like he said, and there's no tracks back there. Whatever it was, it came in the front door, just like everybody else. This isn't gonna work. What do you mean? We can't hold them here. We're not holding them. They can't go anywhere in this weather. Meanwhile, we're gonna find out what happened. What if nothing happened? What if they're telling the truth? Look, add it up. Six plus one is seven. Is that nothing? Somebody could have remembered wrong. What about the tracks? You can't even see them anymore. But we did see them. We both did. Isn't that right? That's right. The question is, what should we do about it? We could have a group of innocent people in there. Well, if we do, we'll find that out, too. Hey, give me your flashlight again. What's the matter? What's that? Here you go, miss. One New York steak. Medium rare, just like you ordered. How much do I owe you? Put it on my bill, Haley. Sure, you say so. Hmm. No strings? No strings. With your bag stuck on another bus somewhere, back around Binghamton is my guess, it's the least I could do. You're a nice guy, Olmstead. Next time you're in the city, stop by the club. Drinks on the house. Baby, you got yourself a deal. Uh, hey, Haley? Yeah? Where are the troopers? Still outside, I guess. Snow seems to be letting up. Say, you didn't pull that gag, did you? The business about the lights and the jukebox starting up. Not me. I'm strictly short orders and pay my taxes to Uncle Sam. I don't know anything about science fiction. A jukebox is a jukebox. And if the blame thing feels like starting up on its own, you'd better go call an electrician. Don't have to do that. Just take me to your leader. Snow's letting up, is it? Quite a bit. You can see the bridge now. And? Well, she seems to be holding up pretty well. I know that bridge. And what's more, I don't trust it. Well, then thank goodness it's not your judgment we have to concern ourselves with. Because if that bridge gets a clean bill of health, you're going to drive the bus across it. Mister, you may be a hot shot in Boston, Mass., but when it comes to bridges and buses, I got seniority. And I tell you, that bridge is so old that... There it goes again. Almost like a strobe light. They keep going on and off like somebody's throwing a switch. We're losing power. I'd say it's the whole area. Or it could just be right here. This is getting weird. Just plain weird. I wish whoever it was would play his cards right now and get it over with. Why don't they do something? What's the point of us all staying cooped up here and... Honey, sit down. I will not sit down. Take your hand off me, George. Oh, my. The young lady suffers from claustrophobia, I suppose. Isn't that just dandy for the rest of us? She's right. If this is some sort of a game, let him come out in the open like a man. That's right. It's because he's afraid. The human race is too tough for him, is that it? Well, I'll take him on. Even at my age. The point is, we're all kids in a closet here. But what does that mean? We're all just as much in the dark. Nobody understands what's going on. But it happens to be a fact that if it was some kind of saucer that landed in the pond, and if he did come in here... I think it would be a real healthy idea if we pinpointed that particular somebody and kept him from leaving. That makes sense. I think that girl might have the right idea. Maybe whoever it is is invisible. Maybe he's just playing around, cat and mouse. Oh, please. That's utter nonsense. It's as good an explanation as any I've heard. But what if the thing doesn't show itself? Do we just sit around here holding our breaths? 
We may not have to. You mean you figured out who it is? Eh, not exactly, but we found something in the snow outside that may be a clue. Really? And what is it? An alien spacesuit? No. Just this. What is it? They look like scales of some sort. Oh, please, for the love of God. Look, it could just as easily be guitar picks dropped by some itinerant teenager. That's what I thought at first. But it turns out there are a lot of them outside, scattered in the snow. Mostly under the snow by now. They sparkle when they catch the light. Like fish scales. The trail leads across the highway, from the pond, straight to here. So this is the first hard evidence we have. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm afraid it's true. Someone in this diner is not what they appear to be. By golly, I knew it. It's the creature from the Black Lagoon. Flew down here from some water world. And now he shed his skin like a snake. Better look under everybody's coat, boys. Pretty soon he'll be swallowing folks whole. What about you? I don't see you eating any food. I had me some fries and a Coke. Can't eat meat. Too greasy. Hey, my food's not greasy. Of course, it is a uh, ground-up cow. Now, if you ask me... Nobody asked you and nobody will. Why don't you leave the old man alone? And who invited you to speak your piece? Oh, I didn't realize we were waiting for invitations. I've seen your type, fella. You got a thing about bossing everyone around. Those scale things, they couldn't be from Mars. No water up there. Has to be Venus. Now Martians, they hide in the sand till something comes by and zap, get them with their tongues, like one of them lizards out in the desert. Or is it the other way around? Look, it's bad enough having to sit here without listening to all this petty arguing. I told you it would come to this, and I was right. Come off that high horse of yours. Everybody sit down, now. We're not playing around here. What was that? The sugar bowls. They all cracked, just like they exploded. Well, now I gotta go and buy new ones. You all right, Miss McConnell? I... I think so. <laughs> now, who'd be calling here this time of night? I told headquarters where we were. I'll take it. Be my guest. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's Perry here. What's that? Mm hmm. It's definite? Yes, sir. That's fine. Right. Thank you. Well? The bridge is okay. Well, it's about time. Are you sure? County engineers just checked it out. A load of snow just broke away, and, well, with no more snowfall, they say it's safe. Shall we go? Well, if that was a county, I reckon it's okay. I'm gonna take it real slow, though. What about it? We can't hold them. You're making a big mistake, officer. A big mistake. You're letting a monster out. Well, that might be, Pop. That may well be. But I can't hold people on suspicion of being not human. You can move them out anytime. Okay, folks, let's go. You sure about the bridge, officer? I never liked that sucker. She swings in the wind, and she's not a suspension. Yeah, you can follow us. We'll take the car across first, just to be sure. You can pay your checks over here, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a real pleasure serving you. Safe trip and Godspeed. You all come back and see us real soon now. Except for one of you, that is. Yeah, that's it, then. Just like that. What was it all for, anyway? Just part of the job, to protect and to serve. I sure hope they're going to make it safe and sound. I feel like we should follow them. Well, as soon as they cross the county line, they're out of our jurisdiction. All we can do now is lead them across the bridge and hope for the best. Whatever happens after that, it's out of our hands. Yeah. But I still got that feeling, you know? What feeling? Like, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. No tips. Not a one. We're closed. I said we're all closed up. Didn't you see the sign? Coffee, please. Black. All right. One coffee. But that's it. Kitchen shut down. Did you burn yourself? No. No. 
I'm all right. But what I mean is, didn't you get on the bus? I saw you with my own eyes. Oh, I did indeed. Yes, I went on the bus. And you know something? The bridge wasn't safe. It collapsed halfway across. State trooper's car, the bus, kaplunk, right in the water. It's a terrible scene. But nobody got out except me. Except you? Except me. Hmm. Lucky, I guess. Very lucky, but... But... But what? You're not even wet. Wet? What's wet? What do you mean, what's wet? You landed in the river, but your clothes are all dry. An illusion is all. Just an illusion. Like that thing playing. That's an illusion. Say, how'd you do that? Or the telephone ringing. Hello? Hello? Nobody there. You see, just an illusion. A parlor trick is all. What? What's going on? What are you, some kind of magician? Me? Hardly. See? Nothing up my sleeves. I'll take my gloves off so you can be quite sure. Uh, do you have a match by any chance? Your hands, you've got scales all over your skin. Well, what do you know? Before you faint dead away, I might as well tell you. The name really isn't Ross, and I wasn't really going to Boston. Actually, I've been sent down as an advance scout. You know, these, um, what do you call these, these cigarettes? Oh, they taste wonderful. We don't have a thing like this on Mars. No kidding. Uh, that, incidentally, is where I'm from. We're beginning to colonize, and my friends, who will be arriving shortly, I think they're going to like it here. It's a lovely area, so homey, so off the beaten track. Just the place to start a colony. Don't you agree, Mr. Haley? I don't mind. I have a little waiting to do myself. You see, Mr. Ross... Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> How did you do that? With your tongue? Most remarkable. Must have been 18 inches long. Ah, just a tasty little trick I learned back home. It makes it unnecessary for me to eat the local fauna, which is, let's face it, pretty disgusting. Cows and all that. Anyway, the name isn't Haley, and I agree that this is an exceptional place to colonize. We folks from Venus had the same idea, only we got it several years ago. I think I ought to tell you now that your friends aren't coming. They've been intercepted. There is a colony arriving, but it's from Venus. If you're still alive when they get here, you'll see how much they differ. What do you mean by that, if I'm still alive? Not much silicon-based protein here, and I've always heard about Martians. An intergalactic treat. Supposed to be a real delicacy. Don't look at me like that. You stay away now. I'm just going over to the jukebox. For the time being. I agree about what they call music. It helps to pass the time. Why don't you play some while we wait? All right. If you insist. Incident on a small outpost of civilization. To be believed or disbelieved, depending on your frame of reference, your imagination, and whether or not you're from Mars, Venus, or Missouri. But no matter the degree of your skepticism, if a sour-faced dandy named Ross, who looks like a stocks and bonds salesman, or a big good-natured counterman who handles a spatula as if he'd been born with one in his mouth... If either one of these two entities walks onto your premises, you'd better hold his hand, scales and all, or watch his words, especially that long, sticky tongue of his. Because the gentleman in question just might try to colonize you, or at least take you with them on a one-way trip into the Twilight Zone. 
More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up, starring Richard Kind, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Chaz Holloway and Dennis Etcheson, and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Mike Starr, David Darlow, Brooke Sanford, Doug James, Jeff Lupiton, Kurt Nabig, Meg Thalkin, Lynn Foley, Carl Amari, Sarah Marks, and Roger Wolski. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etcheson, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.